The following is a presentation of TFNN. Next up, uh, we're going to go to uh, Florida, Titusville. Nick, uh, thanks for hanging on the line. How you doing today? Hi, yourself, sir? I'm doing well. Uh, Ken, I want to say I'm, I'm 84 years old, and the way you explain things makes it very easy to follow. That's uh, very, that. very, uh, very nice of you to say, Nick. I appreciate that uh, very much. Have a good day, sir. All right, you too. Live at TFNN. Breakout Investing with your host, Ken Shreve. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy hump day. Welcome to another edition of Breakout Investing on TFNN. 877-927-6648. That's the number to use if you want to Give me a call and talk about this market. You can catch my show daily on TFNN from 3 to 4 Eastern. If you can't listen live, head over to iTunes. You can pick the show up as a podcast as well. And don't forget, the smartphone is a great way to listen to the program. If you're out and about, plug those earbuds in. Open your smartphone browser. Type in tfnn.mobi. Very simple, very easy. It pops right up, and then click Listen Live, and it is easy as pie. I'll be going over charts like I always do. If you want to look at those charts live right along with me, you can use Tiger TV to do that. That is available right on the homepage of TFNN.com. Channel 1, the show is carried live, and it is archived on Channel 13. Tiger TV is also viewable on your handheld device as well. All right, taking a look at the major averages here. It is a Wednesday, another very busy day of earnings. And i got to tell you, looking at all the earnings reports today, it's probably the best day of earnings that I've seen uh, since earnings season started a couple of weeks ago. A lot of uh, big movers on better-than-expected results, so we'll take it. Third quarter earnings season has been uh, generally a big disappointment up to this point, but some good, solid earnings reports we'll talk about later in the program. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ composite here. You can see the tech index is sitting right at its 200-day moving average, looking quite vulnerable, if you ask me. NASDAQ hit an intraday high of 3,012 today. It is down near its session low here, down almost six points to 29.84. Its 200-day moving average is 29.70. 3, 29.73. So it is about uh, 10, 11 points above its 200-day uh, moving average. Let's take a look at, uh, well, before we take a look at the S&P 500, talk about volume on the NASDAQ. It is tracking a little bit higher than what we saw yesterday, not by much. NASDAQ volume on Tuesday was 1.78 billion shares. That's a little bit above average. Uh, headed into today, the tech index has uh, showed three higher volume declines in the past four trading sessions. That was headed into today. So if the NASDAQ ends lower today and volume rises from Tuesday's level, that would be four declines in the past five trading sessions. So we know right now that the NASDAQ is under distribution. We know that a lot of leading growth stocks are under uh, distribution as well. That makes it a a very tricky environment to make money in stocks, uh, which is why my Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio is very lightly invested right now. So uh, it doesn't make sense in my strategy to try to make money when the market tide is flowing decidedly negative, which it is right now. Uh, so at this point, really just watching the NASDAQ composite, the S&P 500 for a rally attempt. Uh, a first day of a rally attempt. That would be any up day. The NASDAQ or S&P could be up one point. It could be up 30 points. Um, it just needs to close higher from here. That would be day one of the rally attempt. And then what we'd want to see is some confirmation, some follow through after that. Now, the confirmation or follow through should uh, come on the fourth day or later of the rally attempt. So we'll just kind of keep an eye out, look for some follow through uh, if we get it. Right now it looks like the selling is going to take a little while longer to run its course and whether or not the NASDAQ composite holds its 200 day moving average certainly is going to be predicated on what Apple has to say tomorrow after the close and also Amazon reports tomorrow after the close. So a couple of high high tech bellwethers with earnings report 
with earnings reports uh, coming up. Uh, wanted to check on some economic data. It's been very light up to uh, this point, but today we did have new home sales data for September. It came in at 389,000 units versus the consensus estimate of 385,000, so slightly above expectations. August new home sales were revised lower just by a little bit to 368,000 from an initially reported 373,000. Uh, the home builders continue to flex their muscle. You know, it makes sense to talk about, you know, leadership market, uh, the ITB, the iShares Dow Jones U.S. Home Construction Index Fund, still sitting near highs here, holding above its 50-day moving average, uh, still under accumulation, not showing anything in the way of sell signals. It is uh, outperforming once again today, up 1.3% to 2087. And, you know, the, impre the performance of the home builders truly has been uh, impressive. In fact, after the close today, we're going to listen closely to what Ryland Group has to say. Ryland Group has been consolidating gains since mid-September, thereabouts. You can see it's in a nice little technical setup here, holding near highs. Looks like resistance at around the $34 level, but shares of Ryland outperforming today up close to 3% to 33.20. Will it be able to take out that 34 level with conviction. Well, we'll see what the company has to say after the close. They are expected to earn 17 cents a share, reversing a year ago loss with sales up 40% to 347.6 million. So, uh, you know, consensus seems to be that the home builders have made it through the worst of it. Looking at the technical picture, not only of the ITB, but Ryland and also, uh, Pulte Group, PHM, they're going to be coming out with earnings uh, tomorrow, Thursday, before the open. And Pulte Group, you can see here, holding near highs as well. Got some resistance at uh, 18, but the stock right now trading at 17.55, up 1.4%. Uh, earnings tomorrow morning from Pulte. Uh, same situation as Ryland. They're going to be profitable in the quarter, reversing a year ago loss. Look for earnings of 20 cents a share. Sales up 23% from a year ago to 1.4 billion. So Ryland Group after the close today and Pulte Group before the open Thursday. We also had the uh, FOMC meeting conclude today, a two-day meeting that started yesterday. Uh, didn't really hear anything new uh, from the meeting. The Fed opted to... Uh, continue its program of buying $40 billion in mortgage-backed securities each month until it sees significant uh, improvement in the labor market. Uh, the Fed also maintained its Operation Twist program, where it sells short-term securities and buys longer-term treasuries to keep interest rates low. Fed accepts, uh, the Fed expects exceptionally low levels of interest rates through mid-2015, so no change there uh, either. Crude oil today at uh, 85.73 a barrel, down at 94 cents on the session. Haven't checked in on shares of DIG here. The uh, actually, you know what? I didn't want to. Um, I don't want to look at that. Well, I'm going to go back to that uh, oil chart. But the oil settles today at 85.73, down at 94 cents. And gold for December delivery lost seven dollars and eighty cents, half a percent. Settled at one thousand seven hundred one dollars and sixty cents an ounce. All right, let's go back to this uh, USO, the United States Oil Fund. You can see it really is in a lot of technical trouble here. USO back in September traded up to around 37, tried to get back above its 200-day moving average, but was turned away. Uh, then it falls below its 50-day moving average, and look at how that 50-day has now uh, turned out to be a resistance level as well. So the USO is working on six straight declines today. It is uh, down 1.1% to 31.60. The United States Oil Fund, a uh, very liquid oil ETF, tracks the... Uh, price of West Texas light, uh, intermediate light sweet crude oil. So uh, that's the USO working on six straight declines here. Oil looking uh, quite vulnerable. The yield on the 10-year note, slightly higher today to 1.78%. The 30-year bond also slightly higher at 2.93%.
Uh, financials still looking interesting here, still providing some leadership in the market. XLF is near its lows for the day after hitting an intraday high of 1597. Still trying, you know, going to keep an eye on this one for a breakout over a swing point of 1644. It's probably not going to happen until we get legitimate follow through in the major averages. Uh, right now, again, the market trend is downward. Uh, not seeing any signs that, uh, of, or at least a major shift in sentiment here. See the NASDAQ uh, barely holding above its 200-day uh, moving average, uh, but uh, financials still hanging in here. Hanging in here, you can see the XLF is uh, still holding above its 50-day moving average. Uh, I don't think we even took a look at the S&P 500 today, but uh, let's let's do that. It is uh, underneath its 50-day moving average, still trading nicely above its 200-day line, but S&P 500 also uh, under some distribution recently. It is down. Uh, a little more than four points now, three tenths of a percent to 1408. Its 200 day moving average is at 1375. So from the S&P 500's recent high of 1474, a pullback all the way down to its 200-day moving average again at 1375 would be a pullback of around 7%, and that's about how much the Nasdaq has come down as well. So in the grand scheme of things, not an overwhelming uh, correction considering the market uh, run that's been made uh, since uh, July, uh, basically. All right, uh, so XLF still holding above its 50-day moving average. Bank of America also uh, a holding of XLF and in the news today. It's being sued by the U.S. government for $1 billion for mortgage fraud against Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Uh, let's see if we can get a chart to come up here for Bank of America. There it is, another financial here holding above its 50-day moving average. It is... Um, you know, down in three out of the past four sessions, and it is trading near its session low after early strength. Bank of America down three cents to 9.33. And I wanted to take a look at a earnings report in the financial sector today. Signature Bank. They are based in New York. See a big move for the stock yesterday. Technical breakout and good follow through today. So uh, this is a rare example of a successful base breakout in recent days. Haven't seen many of them. That's for sure. Uh, Signature Bank up 2.4% today to 71.55. Take a look at a weekly chart for Signature Bank. And when you hear me talk about base breakouts, this is really as good as it gets in terms of a, a stock that was in a consolidation that basically you know, started earlier this year. It, um, it broke out. Uh, during this week right here, uh, moved sideways, presented a new entry point at 69.28, and at 71.55, you'd have to do the quick math. I, I, again, don't like to generally chase a stock when it moves more than 5% past a uh, prior high. Uh, Signature Bank may be right in that 5% area right now, but nonetheless, a, a good week of accumulation so far for Signature Bank, um, up 8.1% uh, so far for the week and uh, acting well after a recent breakout over 69.28. Earnings uh, up 20% from a year ago at Signature to a dollar a share. Sales were up 13% to 177.4 million. Stick with me, folks. We will be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. 
bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve with you. 877-927-6648. That's the number to use. Excuse me. Indices now trading near session lows as selling pressure seems to be picking up with about 35 minutes left to go in Wednesday's session. Right now, percentage declines uh, fairly mild in all three major averages, but again, uh, major averages are near session lows now with the Dow down about 32 points to 13,070. The Nasdaq down nine and a half points to 2980, and the S&P 500 down a little more than five points to 14. 08, trying to hang on to that 1400 level. Let's uh, check in on shares of Facebook. I got to tell you that was uh, that was a good, solid earnings report from the recent new issue that came public in May at 38 bucks a share. It has not been an easy road for Facebook since its IPO earlier this year, but um, stock is having a great day today. It uh, gapped up. It is uh, currently up 18.7 on the day three dollars and sixty five cent gain to twenty three fifteen trading near its session low after hitting an intraday high of twenty four twenty five they beat estimates by a penny with profit of twelve cents a share that was basically flat from a year ago sales up a little better than expected to one point two six billion up thirty two percent the company said that fourteen percent of its 1.09 billion in ad sales came from mobile. That was a, su a pleasant surprise for the market. Total ad sales rose 36% from a year ago. That was 
a nice surprise too, uh, because it was uh, it showed sequential acceleration from the second quarter. Because in the second quarter, total ad sales were up 28 percent. So goes to 36% growth in the third quarter. A nice acceleration there. The company's uh, newsfeed ads are picking up, according to Facebook, about $4 million every day. And a large part of that is coming from mobile. Of course, Facebook's business used to be based on display ads for traditional computers. About 60% of its user base accesses Facebook on mobile devices. So that is why there's this uh, shift to mobile going on uh, for Facebook. And um, you know what? It was a, a very strong quarter and a, a quarter that surprised uh, a lot of uh, people. And Facebook, you know, still has the potential to be a market leader here. It is still well off its high and is, you know, has a lot of work to do to get back to its IPO price. But it was, uh, you know, credit to the company for a solid quarter. Other bright spots in earnings today, uh, names that you've heard about on this show before, no doubt. Panera Bread. Panera has, was under quite a bit of selling pressure uh, Friday, Monday, and Tuesday. The stock lost uh, a lot of ground, broke below its 50-day moving average. Uh, the stock has righted itself today. It is up five and a quarter percent to 168.75. Still a ways from its 52-week uh, high of 175 thereabouts, but uh, a lot of buyers in Panera today. Earnings uh, came in at a buck 24 above the consensus estimate of a dollar 19 that was a 28% increase from a year ago. Sales also came in better than expected at uh, 529.3 million that was up 17% from a year ago. Same store sales also better than expected up 6.2% in the quarter. Barclays raised its price target on Panera to 175. So uh, stock trading right now around 169. Uh, so Panera's got about six bucks to go to get to uh, Barclays price target. But uh, good numbers from Panera. Uh, good lesson on how just because bad news at one restaurant doesn't necessarily mean it's going to transfer to all restaurants in the industry group. Remember Chipotle just recently was talking uh, about uh, higher costs and you know margin pressures and all these things and the stock just got uh, obliterated and I said at the time I didn't think these problems were affecting Panera uh, judging by you know overall sound technicals of the stock but you can see Chipotle has really been you know beaten down mercilessly so the problems going on at Chipotle clearly are not being uh, experienced experienced by uh, Panera bread they are however being experienced at Buffalo Wild Wings a former strong performing stock in the restaurant group Buffalo Wild Wings getting hammered today down 11.7 percent almost 10 bucks to 73.70 a share clearly a broken stock now earnings fell unexpectedly from a year ago to 57 cents a share that was four cents below the consensus estimate sales were up 25 percent impressive year-over-year -year growth uh, to 246.9 million but that was about seven million below the consensus estimate. Buffalo Wild Wings lowered its full year earnings outlook due to rising food costs. Great restaurant, great fun, great food, not a good looking stock right now. All right, folks, stick with me. Coming back in about four minutes. Always appreciate you tuning in to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve with you. We will be right back. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. 
you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. TFNN and Great Panther Silver have teamed up for another exciting silver giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Halloween giveaway will be taking place at the end of October, and for three full days, we'll be giving away silver coins and bars every hour from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. to one lucky winner randomly chosen. There's no purchase necessary. For more information and to fill out your registration form today, simply visit the front page of TFNN.com where you'll find all the details. October 29th, 30th, and 31st, we'll choose one lucky lucky winner that will receive a silver coin or bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver. Winners will be announced live on the air each hour for three full days. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to win free silver from TFNN and Great Panther Silver. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex, symbol GPL, or on the Toronto Stock Exchange, symbol GPR. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. All right. Folks, don't forget, uh, sorry, momentary... Uh, distraction there. But uh, folks, don't forget, uh, between October 29th and October 31st, three days, October 29th, 30th, and 31st, TFNN and Great Panther Silver are going to give away 27 pieces of silver every hour between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Eastern as part of the Great Panther Silver Halloween giveaway. You can register right on the homepage of TFNN.com for your chance to win. Again, that's October 29th, 30th, and 31st. Between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. every hour, a listener will win a free piece of silver. Register right on the homepage of TFNN.com. All right, going to take our first call for the day. Head over to Alexandria, Virginia. Talk to Michael. Michael, how are you doing today? Good, Ken. How are you? Uh, not too bad. No complaints. So, uh, how are things? Good, good. Thank you. Thanks for taking my call. You betcha. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Coors, Michael Coors. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, it's been, you know, uh, even though the market is in distribution and a correction, it's been handling pretty, you know, steady pretty good. Uh, I agree. I'm uh, I'm long this stock. It's one of my few uh, long positions in my Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio. I love uh, the growth prospects at, at Coors. I think there's a, a very good chance that we're going to see uh, huge numbers from the company. Its earnings report doesn't uh, come out till 
I think the second week of November. But right. um, you know, I'm uh, I'm I'm just cautious in this uh, in this uh, market environment, Michael. I got a couple of emails from people uh, today asking me if I was thinking about adding uh, to the position in, in Michael Kors, and in this type of market environment, I. Uh, I'm not thinking of doing that right now. I really, before I start adding to positions or even establishing uh, new positions, I really need to see this broad market start to act a little better because, uh, as you probably know, the trend is still uh, downward here, and I think flat out the risk uh, still outweighs the uh, reward. So I'm pleased with the way Coors is, uh, is acting. Uh, during a time when a lot of growth stocks have broken through support levels, uh, this one is uh, still you know, acting pretty well. It's trading here at session low right now at 55.07, but uh, still up seven cents on the day, and its 50-day uh, moving average is right around 53.50. So, you know, yeah, I, okay. I, 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 yeah, I'm still, I'm still long, and uh, you know, I hope to be able to hold this one for for a long time because I think bottom line, it has the potential to be a a, a big a big market leader over the next uh, couple years. Right, that's what I'm hoping too. Okay, thanks a lot, Ken. Okay, thank you, Michael. Have a good yeah, day. And, and thanks for uh, you know all you do every day for us. We really appreciate it. Okay, that's nice of you to say. Appreciate it as well. Yeah, thank you. All right, take care. Bye. Yeah, I mean, uh, Michael Michael Kors is a is solid company. Um, you know, fundamentals driving stock price and getting a lot of feedback in my ears. Uh, people in Florida, if you could. Somebody, all right, we hang up that phone. All right. Okay, so that's uh, Michael Michael Kors. Uh, again, holding above support, not doing anything wrong. Markets, uh, looks like it's selling off late here again. Kors uh, trading near a session low, but still holding above uh, support. Uh, checking in on some other earnings reports here, lumber liquidators a uh, big short position in this stock ahead of earnings and the numbers were blowout uh, no doubt about it the company made 46 cents a share the estimate was for 34 cents that was up 77 percent from a year ago sales were up 19 percent to 204.3 million also way above the consensus estimate of 190 189.7 million lumber liquidators is a hardwood flooring retailer had been showing good supporting action at its 50-day moving average. Uh, the stock gaps up today, currently up 12.5% to 56.39. Uh, like I said, big short position at the end of September. 5.9 million shares were held short in lumber liquidators. Uh, for a stock with an average daily volume just north of 550,000 shares, that's a pretty, uh, pretty big uh, short uh, short position. So, uh, nonetheless, Lumber Liquidators continues to execute nicely. And, you know, of course, there is a temptation to buy technical breakouts like this. I mean, just, be just because a stock gaps up 12.5% doesn't mean the, the train has left the station. I've had a lot of uh, successful trades over the past 12, 15 years buying a gap up, and it has turned out to be actually a good entry point because the stock has continued higher, it held on to gains, etc. So I'm not averse to buying gaps up. But again, uh, just talking with uh, with Michael about cores, I'm just a little bit uh, you know averse to to doing anything in this type of market environment where I think the risk still outweighs the reward. It is a market under distribution, and there just aren't a lot of great uh, setups in the universe of growth stocks that I follow. Um, another name that looks good. Been mentioning this one in the uh, newsletter. Fortune Brands Home and Security. Fortune Brands spun off this uh, company about a year ago, uh, and it is uh, making a nice move today. Uh, down sharply Monday and Tuesday in heavy volume, stopped just above its 50-day moving average. The stock is up 8.6% today to 29.30. Another very solid technical setup here, another stock that you know, looks to be under accumulation here. For Fortune Brands Home and Security trades under the ticker FBH. S, and they provide home security, kitchen, bath, storage, uh, tool storage products for the home building uh, market. Some of its brands include Master Lock, 
as well as Moen Fawcett. So uh, they beat the consensus estimate by four cents with profit of 29 cents a share. That was up 45% from a year ago. Sales up 7% to 909.1 million. That was about uh, almost $10 million above the consensus estimate. So good numbers from Fortune Brands and the stock is benefiting uh, accordingly. Let's also take a look and head over to the healthcare space and look at a fast-growing company, Alexian Pharmaceuticals. Uh, I'll tell you, this is exactly, you know, we've talked about Alexian Pharmaceuticals as a late-stage base, a stock that was vulnerable at uh, current price levels. This is what happens when a late-stage base rolls over. Uh, it, can be, it can be pretty brutal. And Alexian Pharmaceuticals is uh, working on five straight declines. It's getting creamed today down 6.4% to 94.45. Actually hit an intraday high of 101.97. Now you look at Alexian's balance sheet and you really won't see anything wrong. So sometimes fundamentals can look the best at or near a stock's top. And that is uh, looks to be the case with Alexian. I still think I have a a weekly chart here and you can see what um, I don't have the weekly this is another another view of the uh, daily with different moving averages plotted but um, I'll tell you what let's uh, let's just pull up this is I know that's a weekly chart so we'll switch this over for those of you watching in Tiger TV and take a look at Alexian on a weekly perspective and uh, you can see this is just a stock that has made a massive price move uh, judging by its price action this week its run looks to be over now the earnings were fine up 62 percent from a year ago to 60 cents a share that was um, 13 cents above the consensus estimate sales were up 44 percent to 294.1 million just slightly ahead of estimates uh, there its uh, flagship drug is Solaris which treats a condition called PNH it causes a breakdown of red blood cells and leads to anemia so sales of Solaris continue to uh, boom but this uh, looks looks to be a stock in uh, in trouble and I would not uh, I would not go near it. Uh, Gilead Sciences, also in the healthcare space. This is an HIV drug maker. Uh, earnings were down 2% from a year ago to a dollar a share, but sales were up 14% to 2.4 billion. Uh, Gilead Sciences also gaps up today after uh, being down for four straight sessions. Notice it still held above that 50-day moving average, so it was showing relative price strength. Shares of Gilead up $3.41 today, five and a quarter percent to 68.30. Two. Uh, in August, the FDA approved the company's pill Strybild, which combines four anti-HIV drugs in one tablet. So they are a huge player in the HIV drug market, doing a lot of good things, and um, stock's having a good day today. No doubt about it. Uh, two railroad operators going in completely different directions. Let's take a look at the good news first. Canadian Pacific Railway. Uh, they are the number two railroad in Canada. Um, it is, uh, who is it? Bill, uh, Bill Ackman from Pershing Square Capital Management is a large shareholder here. Canadian Pacific Railway having a solid day up 6% to 93.76. Uh, breaking out over some resistance just under 92. Uh, they reported better than expected earnings. And then at the other end of the extreme, we've got Norfolk Southern, which reported earnings late last night. They are a big transporter of coal, and a steep drop in demand for coal really hurt results here. And look at the destruction taking place in shares of Norfolk Southern today, down 7.5% to 61.07. So CP... Canadian Pacific, good earnings, stock moving higher, and NSC, not so good earnings. Also a wild day for shares of interactive corporations. Take a look at IACI. This is a stock that you know was, was holding on to its 50-day moving average for, for quite some time, but also uh, showing some very suspect price action, not only in the month of September when it tried to break out and reversed, so it was a failed breakout, and then it tried to break out again and then reversed again earlier this month. Uh, today, the stock is down 7.8% to 4832 The earnings were pretty good, but the company forecast an operating loss in 2013 
for its media segment as well as uh, some other segments here. But IACI or IAC Interactive operates websites like ask.com, dictionary.com, and match.com. Earnings were up 27% from uh, a year ago to 71 cents a share. Sales up 38% to 714.5 million. Revenue at its search properties rose 43% from a year ago to 370 million. So metrics looked uh, looked okay, but that uh, forecast for 2013 is spooking the market. And uh, again, just a wild, um, erratic day of trading for in IAC Interactive Corporation. Some other big movers today. Let's take a look at AltaSource Portfolio Solutions, ASPS. This company has a mortgage services segment, which basically offers mortgage portfolio management services to uh, loan originators and loan servicers. It also has a financial services segment and technology services segment. Look at the big move it's making today, up 14.2% to 125.32. No news uh, that I could see, but I will tell you that the company is going to be reporting earnings tomorrow before the open. Interesting. Big move one day ahead of earnings. The consensus estimate calls for profit of $1.21 a share, up 81% from a year ago. Sales up 42% to $155.8 million. Obviously, there is some optimism about what the company is going to say tomorrow morning, so keep an eye out for earnings for AltaSource, ASPS, before the open Thursday. In related news, let's take a look at a couple of um, other mortgage service providers. Remember Nation Star Mortgage Holdings. This is a, a company that came public earlier this year in March at 14 bucks a share. Has been a tremendous performer in the market, but a lot of big sellers in the stock today. It is down 10.9% to 31.06, trying all it can to hold on to its 50-day moving average here. It actually plunged below the line, has rallied back above it, but not by much. Uh, last price at 31.06. Its 50-day line is at 30.53. Uh, Nation Star Mortgage Holdings and Aquin, OCN. Let's take a look at OCN because it's uh, having a similarly bad day. Uh, Aquin, actually it's not. It was, but it's it's not. You're actually seeing a pretty good move in Aquin here, up 4.7% today to 37.90. So Aquin Financial and Nation Star Mortgage Holdings, they're both in court bidding for residential capital's uh, loan servicing unit. So I don't know if there's any news that's broken since I, I wrote down this little footnote here, but Aquin uh, doing well today. Nation Star Mortgage Holdings, not so much. Uh, I don't know if that means that Aquin eventually won uh, this uh, court bidding uh, we'll have to uh, we'll have to check on that haven't uh, talked about Apple but let's uh, let's take a look at Apple ahead of its earnings report uh, after the close tomorrow it really is all about Apple I mean if Apple can come out will come up with a blowout quarter um, you know that will likely fuel positive sentiment in technology uh, we'll see what that eventually amounts to but clearly there's a lot of trepidation ahead of um, Apple's earnings report tomorrow after the close. It uh, can't get out of its own way here. It has corrected uh, sharply off its recent high, just over 700 bucks a share. Shares were last trading around 616.10, uh, up $2.74 today, and uh, still holding above its 200-day moving average here at 584. But, uh, you know, bottom line, a lot of uncertainty around Apple here. iPhone sales, iPad sales competition. Is it the same company with Tim Cook leading uh, as it was with, uh, with Steve Jobs? Probably not. Will they be able to execute? So many questions around uh, Apple. Uh, we'll see what they have to say Thursday and we'll be right back folks. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely 
completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Quick check on the markets here. Five minutes left to go in Wednesday's session. Uh, Dow Jones uh, down 31 points to 13,071. NASDAQ down about 9.5 points to 29.80. And the S&P 500 down 5 points to 14.08. Mentioned that uh, Apple is uh, looking a bit vulnerable, shall we say, ahead of earnings uh, tomorrow. Another tech bellwether looking vulnerable as well. Uh, perhaps more so is Amazon.com, down another 2.5% today to 228.46. A big, you know, unequivocal drop below its 50-day moving average, uh, bringing a uh, move into its 200-day line into play here at 216. Um, but Amazon is in uh, facing a lot of selling pressure today. Another stock showing mild signs of uh, distribution here. Uh, Amazon Again, reports Thursday after the close, a loss of $0.08 cents a share is expected. Sales up 28% to $13.9 Coming up tomorrow, in terms of economic data, uh, 
We've got weekly jobless claims. We get that every Thursday. Uh, durable orders for September and pending home sales for September. And then on Friday, the first look at third quarter. Gross domestic product is expected to show growth of 1.9% after 1.3% growth in the second quarter. Also, the final reading on Michigan Consumer Confidence for October is due Friday as well. Uh, coming up after the close, let's take a look at some companies scheduled to report earnings. Akamai recently breaks below its 50-day moving average. Uh, still not completely broken down here, holding above longer-term support. It's 200-day line, but uh, shares of Akamai uh, expected to earn $0.41 cents a share, which would be up 21% from a year ago. Sales up 20% to $338.6 million. Know a lot of uh, Akamai bulls out there. Wouldn't be surprised to see uh, nice numbers from this company also after the close. Don't have any estimate data for Fusion IO, but shares are down 3.1% ahead of earnings to 27.38. We'll see what uh, Fusion uh, IO has to say after the close. And then another financial here, TCBI. I always think of the country's best yogurt when uh, I see TCBI, but this is Texas Capital Bank Shares, uh, one of the better run uh, financials out there. Smaller name, but still good track record of earnings and sales growth. Looking a bit vulnerable here. You can see a, a big decline in, in higher volume where it came down to its 50-day moving average earlier this month. And then on Tuesday, it was down sharply, closed up near its high, but it's still stuck underneath its 50-day moving average here. Texas Capital Bank Shares reports after the close. Earnings should be up 39% from a year ago to $0.78 cents a share, with sales up 22% to $96.4 million. Uh, another late stage base here, Tractor Supply, uh, looking a little vulnerable ahead of earnings. It uh, hit an intraday high today of 97.42, but it's reversed uh, down near its session low at 94.87. Only down 30 cents on the day, but this is another stock that has made a massive uh, price run, starting to look a little tired. They are a farm equipment retailer. Uh, Win Resorts, obviously big uh, big operations for wind, resor wind resorts in Macau off of mainland China. Still looks a little vulnerable here. Uh, it is down $1.74, 1.5% to 112.64 ahead of its earnings report after the close. Uh, also, F5 uh, Networks. And then tomorrow, before the open, Biogen IDEC, 3D Systems, DDD, Cabela's, CAB, Duncan Brands, DNKN, We'll also hear from Under Armour and Sherwin-Williams. Again, that's tomorrow before the Open. Coming up next, the Tom O'Brien Show. Have a great afternoon, everyone. I'll see you back here tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern, for another edition of Breakout Investing.